Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're on part five, our final part to our flat field correction series. And today we're gonna to be learning how to correct for things that our flat frames either did not or could not correct for. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and learn about synthetic flat frames. This eventually happens to all of us. We take flats before an imaging session instead of after, or maybe we go out to a dark site to get really good data, a place that we can't really get to uh, time and time again very easily. We get back, we start processing our data, and then we do our first stretch and realize something went horribly wrong. This right here is a heart dropping moment. Does this mean that our data is trash? Not necessarily. There's actually a trick that we can use to turn the problem itself into a solution. And that's synthetic flats. Synthetic flats is a great tool for every astrophotographer to have in their back pocket, but it's not something to rely on. You still want to take regular flats. Regular flats do a much better job and synthetic flats aren't always perfect. They don't always work, but it's a really good thing to try if you run into a scenario like this where you have something that you worked so hard to do and realize there's a problem. Now I'm gonna show you how to build a synthetic flat and be able to correct for this. Now the first thing that we wanna do is reveal the extent of the damage. We can see a ring going around over here. We can see a donut. And what happened on this data here is this is the blue channel for M101 and my hydrogen alpha filter actually came loose allowing a light leak to come through it causing this entire mess that you see here. Now, what I wanna do is bring this up to the point of background extraction and perform background extraction. Now, when I do background extraction, I like to correct for any potential issues of the stars as well as any stacking artifacts, especially when you're using an AI-based model. It's always a good idea to do that as it can, um, affect how the background gets extracted. It can even affect DBE, even though it's not AI, there's still values in pixels that you wanna make sure that you correct for. So we're gonna to go to process all processes. We're gonna to go to dynamic crop. We'll go ahead and crop out the stacking artifacts. I'll go into process, all processes, blur exterminator, run a correct only. That'll fix any potential issues with the stars. And now what we're gonna do is do a background extraction on the image. I'm gonna go ahead and use SETI Astro's automatic DBE. We have our background extraction here. And now we have the extent of the damage to the image. Now the next step that we wanna do is actually remove the stars from the image here. Let's minimize our master light. And we're gonna make a couple of copies of our image here. And we'll set them off to the side for later use. Now, as far as removing the stars, I prefer to use uh, Star Exterminator. It does a much better job. Uh, there is another way using uh, multi-scale median transform to remove the stars. And I'll show that at the end of the video. I want to avoid any confusion with um, doing a synthetic flat as it, it can be a little bit of a complicated process. It's a few steps, but there's, um, it's, it could be tedious. So we're gonna run through with star exterminator first and at the end, I'll show you how to remove the stars using multi-scale median transform. 
So we have our couple of copies of our image here. And what we're going to do is process all processes, and we're going to go to Star Exterminator. Or we'll Triangle, Drag and Drop. And then we can go ahead and get rid of our star image. Now, this is starting to look a little bit more like a flat frame. And what we need to do is go through and remove any of these anomalies. And we need to also remove our object, in this case, M101. For the first part with the small anomalies, I'm going to go ahead and use SETI Astro's Blemish uh, Blaster. And if you haven't seen SETI Astro's scripts, make sure to check them out. Very useful, very good, and uh, he has them available on his website. So what we're going to do is do an auto stretch. And we're going to go ahead and zoom out and identify some of these issues here. I like to go ahead and make sure that we zoom in on what we're trying to correct for because there's different um, brightnesses that we need to work with and make sure that we keep the, as much the same as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and work these one at a time, making sure that we don't do too many changes to the background here. And this is a stage where the more tedious you are, the more careful you are, and uh, the more attention to detail you take, the better your results will be. So I won't take too long on this, just for the video purpose, but you definitely want to make sure that you take your time, be as thorough as possible, and that will increase your likelihood of this doing a very good job for you. Now, we get into this little donut over here, and we have a lot of change in the, um, the background here. And we want to be careful that we don't cause stuff like this to happen. I'm just going to let this go just for the video purposes, um, and you'll see that it'll still pretty much correct um, and do a pretty good job of it. Now, let's go in here. Let's see if we can get some of this with the Blemish Blaster. And then what we're going to do for the Galaxy itself is we're going to actually use Clone Stamp. Um, Blemish Blaster, again, does a very good job, but it does an average around the circle. And it'll, it'll do a decent job of getting rid of this galaxy. However, um, it does introduce different layers of, um, of brightness. So we want to do the galaxy manually. Uh, so we're, let's go ahead and apply this to the main image. And then we're going to take a peek, make sure that we're looking good. I like that right there. We're going to go and zoom in on our galaxy. Let's exit out of Star Exterminator and Blur Exterminator. We'll go into Process All Processes and go into Clone Stamp. Now, if you've never used Clone Stamp before, what you're going to do is just click on the image and then you'll notice all of this grayed out area become available to adjust. Your radius is gonna be how big the brush is that you're using. Use something that you're comfortable with. I'm personally gonna use uh, a radius of 150. You'll hold control, click on the screen, and then uh, as you move your mouse, you'll see your brush up here. You wanna stay close as close as possible. If you look at this little X over here, you want to stay as close as possible to it. And then as you click, you want to just kind of work the outside. And I'm going to go ahead and press control again. You can see a different um, brightness level. And you just want to work this as 
carefully and as slowly as you can. And I'm kind of just pressing control throughout all of this. So it'd be control, click, and then let go of control and you'll see your, your brush up here. And we're just gonna kind of work this around keeping as much of the brightness around the galaxy as we can. It's not gonna be perfect. And, and like I mentioned, synthetic flats, they don't always work. They're not always perfect. Um, so regular flats is where you want to be. And you always wanna make sure that you do regular flats. Never use this as a substitute. But in a pinch, it does a pretty decent job when it works. So I'm just working M101 in on itself, kind of erasing it from the, uh, from the synthetic flat here. And again, just staying as close as possible. There's very little movement on the mouse after you press control and hit click. If you go do something way out over here, it's gonna take on the brightness further out. So that's why we wanna stay close. And then once we get this moved in and completely gone, we'll move on to the next step. And that should work right there. That'll do a, a good enough job. Now, if we just exit out of clone stamp, We'll have to redo everything we just did. Always make sure to uh, click the little green check mark here, and then we can exit out of clone stamp. What we're gonna do now is go to process, all processes, and we're gonna go to multi-scale median transform. Let's reset it. And we wanna go to layers and go to five. From here, what we're gonna do is disable the first five layers leaving just the residual checked. Double clicking on a layer will either disable it or enable it. Red X is disable, green check is enable. We'll grab the triangle, drag and drop. And what this is gonna do is just smooth out our synthetic flat. We'll right click, go to identifier, name this sin flat. And then we'll open up one of our clones. Here we have our cropped uh, star corrected with correction only in Blur Exterminator and background extracted uh, image. Let's go ahead and name this light. We'll exit out of multi-scale median transform. We'll go into process all processes. We'll go into pixel math. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go light times median open parentheses sin flat divided by sin flat. So we have our light frame and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, calibrate our light frame or flat field correct our light frame with our new synthetic flat frame. And this uh, formula should look familiar from part four. Let's go ahead and create a new image. We'll go to uh, name this corrected light. And with uh, any luck, if this um, was done correctly, triangle, drag and drop. And let's do a quick stretch. And we are flat field corrected. And it's as easy as that. It does take some practice, so don't be discouraged if it doesn't work the first time. Again, the uh, more time you take with building your flat, um, getting all those little anomalies out, the better the result. And again, it doesn't always work this way. And as you can see, it's not 100% perfect, but this now turns this into some usable data. Now, if you're not using Star Exterminator, what you're gonna do in place of the Star Exterminator step is you're gonna take your image after it's been background extracted, and we're gonna make a clone of it. 
one image will be named uh, something that you can easily identify, light, flat, whatever is more uh, comfortable for you. The other image will name something such as stars. We'll minimize our first image, leaving us with just the stars image. We'll go to process, all processes, and then we'll go to multi-scale media and transform. Always make sure to reset just in case anything's in there that you changed. We'll go to five layers, and we're gonna go ahead and disable the residual layer by double clicking. If you see check marks on the first five layers and a, a red X on the residual layer, then you're good to go. Triangle, drag and drop. What this will do is leave us with a black background with just stars. We'll go ahead and exit out of multi-scale media and transform. We'll go to process all processes and go to pixel math. And then we'll bring up our first image, light, flat, whatever you named it. In this case, I have it named light. So we'll go light minus stars. We'll create a new image and we'll name it something else, flat or light. I always like to create a new image just in case something goes wrong, it's easier to go back. If you're confident in it, then you can just go ahead and replace the image. Um, we'll do triangle, drag and drop. And this will leave us with an image without uh, a lot of the stars. Uh, personally, I like Star Exterminator a lot better. It gives a much cleaner result, uh, a lot easier to work with. However, this will work as well. Uh, it just leaves a little bit more work throughout the image to clean it up. So I hope you found this useful. And if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider becoming a Hidden Light Photography member. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me create more content to help you along your astrophotography journey. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? Also, let me know if this helped you save some of your data. And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.